Namaste, Pravin Mankar from Pratibim once again. Today we will see the human mind and the human behavior. Behind me is the same chart with a little bit of extension. Here you have the column which shows the external stimulus that we receive. We see things, we hear things, we smell things, we taste things, we touch things. Then we see a column showing the sense organs, eyes, see, ears, hear, nose, smells, tongue, tastes and the skin touches. Whenever we get an external stimulus or a trigger, the conscious mind gets activated and here are the properties of the conscious mind and here are the properties of the subconscious mind. Now let us, we have already seen the functioning and properties of the conscious and the subconscious mind. Let us see how it affects our behavior. Now imagine I am returning home after a late night show and on a deserted street as I am walking towards my house I see three thugs at least by appearance they are thugs as we would say gundas or mawalis walking menacingly towards me. So my eyes see these three thugs coming towards me. My conscious mind becomes aware of the danger and I have now to take action. I can either fight them if they act funny with me or even before they act funny with me I can run away. So I have two choices, flight or fight. For both these actions, when I decide to fight or when I decide to run, I need instant extra energy. So where will I get this instant extra energy? This instant extra energy comes to me through the body chemistry. Whenever there is a mental situation of stress, my body responds by releasing a hormone called adrenaline. That adrenaline affects my heart, my heart starts pumping faster and extra quantity of blood is sent to my muscles in the same time. So if I am ready to fight extra blood, extra strength in my arms, I am ready to fight. If I am ready to run away, extra strength, extra energy in my leg, legs and I am running away. So response to stress or response in face of fear is fight or flight governed by my body chemistry and in this case it is adrenal. Trigger, I saw things, my eyes gave me that message, my brain did the calculations and then I took a decision through the body chemistry to run or to fight. Take another example, I get a phone call, my favorite grandmother expired. I am so attached to her that as soon as I hear this news, my eyes fill up and I start weeping. So what happened here? My physical ear heard the news, my favorite grandmother expired. My brain started analyzing the news and I immediately calculated, oh my God, I have lost somebody who is precious. And that sent a message to my subconscious mind and it secreted extra water through my eyes, which is not normal. Whenever I am sad or I heard, hear something which is shocking or see something which is shocking, I start crying. And I cried. So an external trigger stimulus created a thought and created a reaction in my body. Take the third case. I am going past in my car and I suddenly get the smell of my favorite dish. Freshly fried potato chips or wafers. And I love them so much 
that instantly my mouth starts watering. So here is an external stimulus through my nose, gives me the analysis in my conscious mind and it triggers a chemical reaction in my body. My body produces a specialized chemical called saliva in my mouth. So you will make this connection that an external trigger affects my thinking process. My thinking process targets my subconscious mind. My subconscious mind gives the message and my body chemistry produces the reaction. So my expressions in life are because of the body chemistry. I decided to fight, that is my expression. I decided to run away, that is my expression. I started crying, that is my expression. My mouth started watering, that is my expression. So whatever my body produces as a reaction is due to the conditioning of my conscious mind. Now let us take a child brought up in India on a diet of sweets. In India we are fond of sugar and sugary sweets. And let us take a child brought up in the western world where they are not so focused on the sweets. As both the children grow up to become adults, here is a child whose mouth waters when he sees a gulab jamun or a rasgulla. And the western child, you keep a plate full of rasgullas in front of him and he will say, my God, calories, sugar. So why these two different reactions? The two different reactions are because of the society. You will see the conscious mind is governed by the society, is educated by the society, is cultivated by the society. So this boy who was cultivated in the western society will look at sugar with lot of suspicion and lot of no no. And this boy who is cultivated in the Indian environment will love the sugar and he will say oh I like it. So this is how your life is governed by the society in which you are born and brought up. That example of fear which I gave, fear is planted in our minds by the society in which we are born. Look at the famous example of the Indian society. Beta soja nahi to gabbar singh jayega. This fear has been planted in that child's mind right from his infancy. At every stage, some fear has been put. Do this or this will happen. And he grows up into an adult fearful of things. So if you have understood this mechanism of human behavior, now we can talk more about how meditation will help. Look, look out for my next video. Thanks for watching.